You have to be tough as a damn boot to be good. Because you have to stand your ground when you need to stand your ground. And you have to be able to say no when it's time to say no. And you have to mean it. And so then you have to think and plan strategically so that when you're going to say no, you can mean it and it will stick. You know, and that takes a certain amount of, that takes a certain amount of integrated malevolence, I would say. And, and once it's integrated, it's not malevolence, it's strength. It's It's strength of character. It's the ability to stand your ground. And you have to cultivate that. And you cultivate that at least in part by telling the truth. And so you take your place in the world as a decent person and as a decent citizen. And then and you play the hierarchical game properly. And that is to stand up straight with your shoulders back. It's like the world's an onslaught. You've got the tyranny of culture to deal with. You've got the catastrophe of nature. You've got your own damn malevolence and ignorance, right? All coming at you. Plus the incredible, complicated, indeterminate potential of the future. That's all coming at you. And it's all your responsibility. And you can cringe away from it and be afraid of it and be victimized by it and be bitter and cynical about it. And and no wonder, because it can be painful. Or you can turn around and you can say, man, bring it on. Because there's more to me than there is to the catastrophe. And this is what I discovered from looking at what I looked at. I looked at the darkest things I could look at, really, for 30 years. I was really a lot of fun to be around, I can tell you. I looked at the darkest things that I could think of, right? Not only what happened in Auschwitz and what happened in the Gulag, but, but personal issues. You know, it's like I wasn't so much interested in the totalitarians as a group. I was interested in the people who undertook the terrible acts that the totalitarians required. You know, the people who, I was just rereading Ordinary Men, and it was a story about a police battalion in Poland that trained ordinary policemen to take naked pregnant women out into the field and, sh- and, and, and shoot them in the back of the head. It takes a lot of training, by the way, before you can bring yourself to do that. And you aren't the same person by the end of it. It's pretty goddamn horrific. You know, and I was trying to figure out what would it be like to be that person? Because we are that person. And then what would it be like to not be that person, right? To refuse to do that, to not participate in that. You know, and and what I've discovered by making that totalitarian proclivity personal was that there was there's more to us than there is to the horror. His nature is bent on our destruction. Bad as culture is, tyrannical and bloody, back as far as you can look. As malevolent as you are in in the darkest part of your heart, and that's plenty malevolent. The the, the possibility that's within you that can well up the, the courage and the truth and the ability and the skill and, and, the, and the willingness to set things right, if you are willing to set them right, is more powerful than all of that. And so it's so interesting. It was, it was proof for me of an old saying I, I read from Carl Jung. It's an alchemical motif in Sterquilinus Inventor, which is what you most want to be found will be found where you least want to look essentially. And it's so interesting because it means that if you're willing to turn around and to stand up, say, stand up straight and face the darkness, like fully what you discover at the darkest part is the brightest light. And that's something that's so much worth discovering because there's going to be terrible darkness in your life. And it's going to make you cynical and bitter. And it could easily be that you're just not looking at it enough. Because if you looked at it enough and you didn't shy away and you brought everything you had to bear on it, you'd find that there was more to you than there was to the horror. You know, I watched my father-in-law. I'll end with this. And you know, you don't know, eh? Because you're not bringing your A game to the table with all that cynicism and bitterness and resentment and willful blindness and avoidance. Maybe you're playing at 60%. It's not good enough because there's too much of what's bad for 60% to be good enough. It's like you need 90% or 95% or 100%. My, when, when, when about 15, 20 years ago, my mother-in-law developed um, pre, pre, frontal temporal dementia which I wouldn't recommend. You know, it's one of those degenerative neurological diseases like Alzheimer's. And those bloody things are... (sighs) 
like they're in the top echelon of awful. You know, you watch a person deteriorate before your eyes. It's a lengthy, lengthy death. And, and it was slow. And her husband, he, was, he lived in this little town that I grew up in, about 3,000 people. And he was quite a character, man. Everybody knew him. I bought him a Foghorn Leghorn t-shirt once because that's kind of what he was like. He was loud and sort of bombastic, but he stood up straight, I can tell you. And he played the fool a little bit mostly for the amusement of people, but he was no damn fool.